Hello everyone, welcome back to Age of Nagash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. But to be honest, what we're going to be covering in this video applies to any tabletop game, be it Wargaming, Warhammer obviously, or even D&D or something as small as that. Because in this video, we're going to be talking about all about motivation in the hobby. So this is going to be things to keep you motivated while you're building, while you're painting, and overall to try and help you reduce that awful, awful pile of shame that you've got stored away somewhere or that backlog as some of us call it. By being able to work through painting slumps, managing your hobby time and setting goals for yourself. And the reason why I'm actually doing this video is because a subscriber who goes by the name of Hobbo from Zozo, fantastic name there, actually put a comment on a community post I put up was asking you guys for thoughts on future video ideas because I know I've got some certain series that go on and I know you guys like them which is great and I'm really happy to hear that. But also what I would like to do is actually just dive in to see what you guys want to hear, making things a little bit more different here for sake of variety, but also because I've always said Asian and Gash is all about community here. And if the community is in you guys have got ideas for videos, please let me know in the comments of any of my videos and I'll be happy to discuss them as I think they can be some really fantastic ideas as I think the subject we're covering in this video is a very important one. I really think hopefully it'll help people out as well. So thank you very much for that question. What I'd also like to say is Russell Taylor asked a similar question as well. So thank you for your suggestion there. And what the question was, as you can see, it's been on the screen now. It's discussing how you have worked through painting slumps or managing hobby time in general, setting goals and staying on track, etc. So that's exactly what we'll be going through this video, like I've mentioned. How I'm going to be doing it is I'm firstly going to talk about what is this backlog or what is this pile of shame, particularly if you're quite new. And if you're not new and you've been in this business for a little while, just trying to really enforce the idea of why you want to try and do something about it, right? Because I don't lie, I'm not perfect. I still have one. It used to be a lot bigger. So what I'll be talking about in this video after we've gone through that is essentially talking about my own personal experiences, what I have done to try and reduce my backlog and try and keep up hobby motivation. And then after I give you guys my experience, I'm then going to break it down to say what I learned from it and then try and make it into a way for you guys to be able to take something useful from it and be able to use it to boost your motivation and keep you painting. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to building and painting, you want to get those models that you buy onto the table to make the most out of them. And obviously, if you can have them painted, it just makes you really sort of connect to the game you're playing. And like I said, doesn't matter if it's D&D, doesn't matter if it's Skirmish, doesn't matter if it's Warhammer 40k, doesn't matter if it's Age of Sigma, doesn't matter if it's literally any tabletop game there is out there that involves painted models. So with that aside, what I'd like to do is go into talk about why this is really an important subject, because simply without motivation, you fall into a painting slump which essentially just means you kind of stop, right? You kind of just leave the paintbrush for a few weeks, a few months, something like that, or stop building things if that's something you're struggling with. Then you basically feel bad that you haven't painted or you haven't been building and working on your hobby projects. And then you have this guilt, which to be fair, is actually really quite funny when you talk about it like that. You haven't been painting a little plastic toy so you feel guilty about it. It sounds weird, but I think most of us can actually relate to that and know it's true because Age of Sigma, Warhammer, all those other tabletop games that I've talked about is a hobby at the end of the day, which means we do it for fun and we should really enjoy it and certainly not feel bad because at the end of the day, this is costing us all quite a bit of money depending on what system you're in, right? And at the end of the day, why would you pay money to feel guilty unless this is some sort of weird perversion for you? But obviously, if you are like a full time commission painter, then obviously you crack on with your work. At the end of the day, this is your job. Fair enough. But what I will say is that obviously, if you have like two jobs or four kids or something like that, then that's fair enough. And you shouldn't feel any pressure to paint because I don't have that currently at the moment. I'm not in that situation. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're not doing good enough and you really need to start painting more. At the end of the day, you've got a fair enough reason, right? So something you may have experienced is when you have been in a painting slump, you end up with the dreaded unending backlog or pile or shame, whatever you want to call it. This is when, like most people in the hobby, you ended up buying more models than you ended up finishing, right? It's kind of simple maths. This can leave you with literal stacks of anything from a new in box built or part painted models and what I'm gonna have on the screen now I'll do my best so I'll just find pictures on the internet of literally people's piles of shame that you can see how high up it goes and you may be sitting there you may be going like poor 
Mine's not too bad then, that's made me feel better. You may be going like, mine's actually worse than that. And yeah, that's, uh, that's really an eye opener. As this is a problem, right? Unless you want to be buried alive by simply your own greed, and then leave your loved ones to shift through all of this stuff that you have bought and try and get rid of it, right? None of us wants us to be in that sort of situation. And the other part of this is simply people attitude to give up. Now, I'm not saying that people listen to this video or people who are just easy to quit, or just give up, all that sort of thing. But, you know, I've, I've been like it as well um, when it comes to talking about the hobby. Because how many times have you said or heard your hobby friends say that their backlog and pile of shame is endless? and as so cannot be helped and finished. So what is the point of trying? And you all sort of joke about it like, oh, you know, just add that one to the backlog, right? And then as an example, months later, the new shiny Sonesh or Lumineth models are coming out, which is something that we're very much in the period of now. And you're already at the pre-order to get all those new shiny models. Then it arrives a week later, and you're excited and motivated to get started with your new army or warband, or whatever it is you're collecting. However, then something else shiny comes out a month later, so you stop your Senesh and are on to the new hotness. This, from what I have seen and heard, most people in the hobby are like when it comes to their attitude of adding to their piles of shame. I'm not going to lie to you, I used to be like this, and I have done this many times in the past. However, I have gotten over my addiction to plastic, and I'm ready to talk about it, okay? I've, I've had a long think about this, and that's why I wanted to do this video now. So thank you very much for Hobbo from Zozo again for giving me the um, courage I needed to talk about it. So now that we know why we want to avoid painting slumps and work on our backlogs by increasing motivation, I will now talk about my own experience and how I have managed to do my best to keep motivation high and guilt low. So this takes us back to the start of 2020 before lockdown and before Nurgle got overpowered where I looked at my piles of shame and I suddenly came to the acceptance that I cannot simply justify buying more models when I had something like two to three thousand pounds worth of unfinished models and just the fact alone that I can't narrow it down to a point between those two enormous numbers. It just really shows where the problem is. And I know some people have bigger backlogs and it's not a massive competition. If anyone wants to go, huh, I've got a backlog of this much, that's absolutely fine. I'm happy you've got a bigger one than me in this situation. And if you've got a smaller one than me, then good on for you as well. And what I will also say, although I've got this point where I was like, right, that's it, I'm not buying anymore. I'm not completely innocent. I will say that my subscription to the Mortal Realms magazine, which if you're not aware, you get four magazines a month with models in each one. I decided to keep this as it's great value and it saves about two thirds of the overall price of those models. So it's really great value and I could justify it. So apart from that, I decided then that I would not buy any other models until my backlog is done. Which if you don't know, is a lot easier said than done. It was quite a big promise I basically made to myself. But here we are over a year later and I have kept my promise to myself and I managed to paint a huge amount of my backlog, probably about half of it, at least a third to half. And if my models were not stored away, I would put up a photo for you guys now going, here's my hobby haul of everything I've painted in the last year. Look at me, I'm amazing. I wasn't that smart. Everything stored away in boxes, guys. We haven't got that, but I have got pictures from like work in progress and stuff, which I'll show throughout the video. And I'm actually going to have a list at the end of everything I can remember that I have painted basically in the last year. Right, now on to how I managed to achieve this. This was by sorting out what I had in my pile of shame and how best to work on it. So obviously for you, just input what you've got in your backlog pile of shame, whatever you want to call it, to work on. But going back to me, I had the list that you can see on your screen now, which is going to be Nighthorn, Ostrich Bone Reapers, Legions of the Gash, Flesh Eater Courts, the Corn Dragon, which is Vorgoroth the Scarred, and Scallop the Skull Hoist of Corn, but I basically renamed mine guys because I converted the guy on top so it's a different model and I've painted mine up like a zombie dragon so essentially it's a vampire lord who is a blood dragon riding upon the biggest zombie dragon in the mortal realms but then I've got my greek temple Sanesh converted army which essentially is my converted slaves of darkness if you see my instagram you'll see it there and you'll see photos on the screen and everything else for that army and this is mainly like I said slaves of darkness but there are some demon elements in there I call it my temple Sanesh. anyway then we've got my Imperial Knights, which is a bit different because that's 40k. 
But I absolutely love the lore and I really think Imperial Knights are really cool. So that's why I've gone for that. And I like like the massive bases you can do for dioramas and everything. So I've got those. And then simply I've got like terrain and scenery. And these are things for when I was looking at building up my own table at home for hopefully doing more battle reports, everything for the channel, which maybe this will be able to do in the future, but obviously COVID has sort of ruined that for now. But something we can look at doing in the future, but also just for having future games was a other project I had. And there was quite a lot of terrain and scenery to do. So as you can see, I have certainly collected a rather large pile of shame. You know, a respectable amount. But my number one priority was to paint what I had already built, as this made the most practical sense for storage, as the built models were already taking up space, you know what I mean? There's no point building extra models that are taking up space to then paint. I might as well work on the ones that I've already built and just left, essentially. And I knew that I wanted to finish building and paint my corn dragon as I paid for this project, at least uh, over 500 pounds and i had basically partly built it so not even like fully built it and it'd been sitting in its own box for months so essentially the reason why i bought this thing was i'd been going to warhammer world like once a year for the last five years i never really bought anything when i went up there and i always liked this model and i said when it was going to come out if it was under 500 pounds i would get it so i got it one day and then basically it was cheaper than 500 pounds but then just bought loads of stuff for conversion parts of it and to make it space cool and everything it ended up being very expensive and the fact that i just let it sit in a box for ages really sort of played on me and really played on that guilt like that's a lot of money sitting there and i haven't put any of it to good use so this is when i actually did something quite interesting and quite controversial which was i wanted to work on the dragon but instead what i did was work on my night horn instead and the reason for this was because i knew i'd be able to paint them up quickly and that would massively help to kickstart my motivation I needed for my long journey ahead into all of my backlog. So when I painted over a hundred Nighthorn models and was feeling really motivated to work on a huge model being my Corn Dragon, and although it took many months of work, I managed to complete the biggest single model, including terrain and scenery that I've ever painted, and this is when I felt like I had made a huge achievement. You know, this thing is the biggest model in all Rage of Sigma, right? And I managed to do it. I managed to get all those Nighthorn done as well, which still, like, when I said, oh, paint 100 models, still took a long time, but I could paint them fairly quickly with my colour scheme that I'd gone for because I've done a few of them before and I know how the technique to make it work. So anyway, now with 2,000 points of Nighthorn army and the biggest model in all Age of Sigma I've painted and completed fully, after this I decided to work on my scenery and terrain. I had for future games at home and battle reports like I already mentioned. The reason I decided to do this is because I knew I could paint this up quicker as I do not need to be perfect when painting up something that is part of the battlefield and it is a quick win. And when I say that it's essentially just because like scenery, again I do paint it up like as I would call like in a nice standard but I don't take as long as it as I do for models because it's just like a building or something right it's just there it can look a little bit grubby depending on what it is because you know it's just part of the battlefield like I've mentioned plus you'll be moving models on it and stuff so you'll be damaging it all the time so you don't need to take too long on it in my opinion for me anyway but like I said the reason why I did this because it'd be a quick win and it would build back up my motivation that the dragon had drained out of me. Because like I said, I was really happy that I managed to get that dragon done, but it had sapped a lot of my motivation, obviously, because it's so long spent on one model. And I then decided to work on my new Imperial Knights army, as this, similar to the Corn Dragon, was a project I had invested a similar amount of money into. I got LED lighting, all that sort of thing for it, lots of magnets and everything else. And extra models I had bought literally just to put on the base of these dioramas I did for the knights. And plus I was brimming with motivation right after doing that senior and train. When I finished the first night, I then moved on to the next night. But then this is when I made a big mistake, as I was really not enjoying painting the second night and I was always making dioramas, like I said, for my Imperial Knights. This just felt like it was taking forever and it was killing my motivation. However, I decided to stick with it and get it done as I did not want to leave it half finished to return to the backlog to have to be finished at another day, right? Just like literally get the thing done. If you've made that mistake, that's the approach I took to it. And it was just too much because even the first one I started, which I believe they're called the Harbingers, that took long enough as it was and then going on to the big night as well it was just in the color scheme takes a while it just like i said absolutely killed the motivation to that and i just wanted to put it all aside and leave it and plus this was the my thing into 40k right i do want to put myself off that game or just 
or just to be honest with you, my Imperial Knight project, as like I said, I spent a lot of money on it and I really didn't want to ruin all of that motivation. So then at this point with my motivation sapped away again, I had to make the decision to not continue with my Imperial Knights and return to them later. This annoyed me as I was on a roll of sticking to one project slash army at a time until it was all done before moving on to the next project slash army. This is when I went to work on my fully converted Slaanesh army, as this is where my motivation and excitement was drawn to. I use this motivation to be able to paint my Slaves of Darkness converted 10 Slaanesh Knights and a Chariot and Sorcerer Lord on Manticore. However, after painting these Slaves of Darkness Knights, that massively drained my motivation. Those were the last part I painted and it was specifically the five new knights you get in that star collecting box, which when you build them all together are absolutely horrible to try and get in all the nooks and crannies, especially where for me, my Sinesh army is what I'd call my showcase army to really show how good at painting I can be and just to really try and push myself. So when you're pushing yourself and not allowing you to make mistakes, especially with white armor and stuff, it's really hard to try and just get everything cleaned up. So that's why I found, that's why it drained my motivation. And this is why I had to switch projects again. It's like I've said, my Slaanesh army is a pain to paint and takes forever, right? I'm really happy how it looks when it's done, but honestly, it's an absolute pain to do. So I needed a quick win. And that is why I decided to paint some of my Oshrox Bone Reapers I had lying around to recharge my motivation. And after I painted up simply an endless spell, which was the Bone Tide Shrieker and 10 more Tech Guard, I had my motivation to go back to painting my Slaanesh and with some more Sanesh painted, that is where I am now. And to be honest with you, I was really surprised after just doing a little bit of a diversion. A couple of weeks, it got my motivation back. Well, I was surprised at how quick of a turnaround that was, which was a great happy surprise, I can tell you honestly. So now that I have been discussing how you have worked through painting slumps or managing hobby time in general, setting goals, staying on track, etc., which was asked to me by, like I said, Hobo from Zozo. I want to summarize to you what I have learned from this. And now I've basically just explained what I've been doing for the last year in terms of my hobby projects and stuff. I want to explain to you what I've learned from it, which is to simply at first organize what you have in your pile of shame collection, whatever you want to call it, and arrange it into projects and armies that will take you a long time to paint and projects and armies that will be able to be painted fairly quickly. For example, these Slaanesh Slaves the Darkness Chaos Knights of mine took me about 18 hours to paint each one. I'm not joking, that's generally how long it took to paint. Whereas these 10 Mortec Guard took me about 18 hours to paint 10. So you can see the discrepancy there, right? And this is just one of the examples of something that takes me a long time to paint and something that takes me a quick time to paint. So what you want to do, now that you have your own example, just think of whatever it is, then alternate between the two like the examples I have given. So I have found this is to be enough to keep me motivated and allow me to achieve my hobby goals and targets because I'm alternating, because I'm going from, God, this is taking absolutely forever. It's really draining my motivation out of me to paint at all. And then you switch and you go to something that's a lot easier. So you have that quick win because you just always need a little bit of, you know, a sense of achievement when you're painting. And that is why I'm also basically kind of against batch painting and I'll tell you for why. And I know batch painting is the quickest way to paint models, but it really depends on what you're painting. For example, these Sinesh Chaos Knights, before I went into painting them, I had no idea they were gonna take me 18 hours to paint each one, right? But going into them, I thought I'm gonna just gonna paint one at a time because I reckon they'll take a while to paint. And thank God I'm glad I did that and not multiple. Because honestly, if I try to paint all five of them at a time, they would still be unpainted because I would just be, you know what, screw this, can't be bothered, this is taking too much time, not enjoying it, I'm gonna stop completely. And then they'll just go back to my pile of shame. And then with the Mortec Guard, I did paint five at a time because painting 10 at a time would be quicker to do, but I knew I would enjoy painting five at a time more. And that's something that I personally learned, and you may disagree with me, and if you've got your own opinions, absolutely fine. Happy to hear them down below. But for me, it's all about enjoying the hobby rather than just getting it done quickly. And I've tried to just rush things and get things done quickly and you just don't enjoy it. It turns you off the hobby and it's really not worth it. So especially with the amount of money we're spending on these, you're meant to try and enjoy every aspect of the hobby. I know some people don't enjoy painting. Hey, I look at painting as a means to an end, right? It's a means to have cool looking models on the table, then that's it, really. But since I've been painting some of these things, like my Chaos Warriors that I've been doing lately, painting one at a time and it's actually been really enjoyable but 
So going back to like the example I was talking about why you want to alternate these things around, it's really going to help you hit your own targets because it's simply just going to keep your progress going. Even if you have to, you're working on a unit at the moment, it's got five models in it, something like that, and you get to the second one. And let's say it's a struggle to paint, but you get the second one done. And you've got another project lying around, maybe it's just a hero or something you've got. And you're like, you know, I'd rather paint him than the unit I'm on at the moment, but I've got to get this unit done as I'm on it, and I don't want to just leave it for now. Paint the hero, but have the other unit nearby. So that means that you know that's what you're going to go back to. And just having that change up for me has made me be able to complete my projects. And like here I am like over a year later and I've managed to, apart from those Mortal Realm magazines, which I'm not going to lie about, I've still got that. I haven't bought new models despite how many new shiny things have came out and how cool some things have looked. And despite the new Sinesh models that have came out, which me as a Sinesh player, I really like, haven't bought any of them. I bought the book and waiting for that to come, but I haven't bought any of the new models because I set myself a goal and this is the most surprising thing out of everything. It's just how well I've managed to stick to it. And this isn't like a video of me talking about how well I've done. This is a video of me trying to explain to you the mistakes I've made in the past, how I've learned from them, and to try and give that information to you guys. So hopefully some of you will be able to take some use out of it. And just something else I want to talk about is talk about hobby time, because that's another element what we've got in the question. And again, I'm going to refer to myself as that's all I can do. I can't talk about the generic person and how much hobby time they have, as to be honest with you, I haven't got a fucking clue. So talking about myself. Uh, so for me, my schedule basically is between 0, 900 hours and 1200 hours of the day I do my workout. Then after that, I have some lunch and then I work on YouTube videos until about 17, 30 hours. And then I cook dinner and then I continue my YouTube work until about 2100 hours to make sure that my videos are still on track and everything else and to get these videos out to you guys but by this point I want to basically just chill and play something like Vermintide or Total Warhammer etc something like that or maybe some TTS but I know I have to say to myself to crack on and do some painting instead some days are harder than others to do hobby work not gonna lie to you but I do my best to try and keep up the progress and using the alternating method I talked about does really help me to get the work done. And what I will say is there are times when you're just completely off it and it's not like, oh, maybe I should do a bit of hobby and do a little bit of painting or building or whatever you're going on rather than just sitting and watching the TV. Maybe, you know, I feel a little bit guilty. Maybe I should do it. Yeah, go on and crack on your hobby. But if you're like, I've just had you know a long day, can't do it, whatever. I personally see the hobby and why I like the element of building and painting as a CSA like, uh, stress relief. That's something that I do. It just takes your mind of a thing. But if that's not for you and you'd rather just play a game or something and you've just had one of those bad days, honestly, just, just have a blast on a computer game or, you know, watch some TV or something. Just because if you're in that state of mind that you know you're not going to enjoy the hobby at all and it's not going to relieve any stress or anything, it's not going to help you by doing it anyway. And that's just a little caveat. Color. And there, obviously, you guys know yourselves better than I do. But what I will say is the alternating method is what I've used to simply just being able to go right in the last year i have nearly cut my backlog in half or i have cut it in half and the backlog is something that i've always referred to and everyone i know always refers to like i said at the start of the video as something that's impossible you can't get rid of it just hide it away and everything else and just you know joke about it and stuff i've actually managed to cut down and like some of my mates and stuff who uh they might watch the video but what i will say is they always try and tempt me going oh you've seen the new Sinesh stuff coming out you're gonna be buying it and all the new death stuff and I'm like nope i haven't bought something for a year i'm gonna not gonna give in now right so it's been going absolutely great for me and I wanted to share with you, like I said, my experiences to hopefully maybe it helps some of you guys out and it really can. Also, loads of money you saved, right? Because you've spent so much money on this hobby. The fact that you're just chucking that money in a closet basically in forms of plastic models you're not going to work on and just buy new stuff, obviously not going to tell you how to spend your money, but just saying you can be a bit more cleverer with it and make the most out of it by actually using what you spent money on, right? So what I just want to talk about now is to tell you what I've managed to get painted in the last year as just to sort of tell you guys how happy I am with this achievement and what I will say when I'm going through this list, feel free and I'd actually enjoy it if you guys let me know in the comments of this video what you've managed to get painted in last year. Again, you may be watching this in a year's time and it's like completely different time in the world, everything else. Obviously, hopefully I've got a lot more of my backlog painted by then, but I'd still be happy to hear like how long you've managed to keep up with progress or just smashing through your backlog. Always good to hear. And it's good to hear from my motivation as well that other people are doing the same. So for myself, what I've got for my Temple Sinesh, like I said, my Sinesh army in general. So I've managed to get my Chaos Lord slash Social Lord and Manticore done. I managed to get Bellicor done. 
my chariot, which I use as a Gore Beast or Chaos Slater Darkness chariot in general. I then have my five Centaur Knights. I've got my five Slanesh Knights, what are the new knights? And then I've got 10 Chaos Warriors done as well for that. My Night Horn, I've got 80 Chain Rouse done, 10 Dreadside Harridans, 5 Hex Rays, 4 Miamon Banshees, the Briar Queen, and Fawn, so like her little warband, 1 Dreadblade Harrow, 1 Guardian of Souls, and 1 Soul Torment. And then from our stretch Bone Reapers, I've got 10 more Tech Guard done, 1 Bone Type Streaker, I then got my Corn Dragon done, and then for 40k, like I said, I got my Imperial Knight Harbinger and Imperial Knight Errant done. And then for scenery, I've got things like my Sunesh big building done, which is like a big ruined temple. I've got things like two Bone Type Nexus done. I got two Death Temples done, one Death Forest, and then a Realm of Life Terrain, which is like a table's worth of Realm of Life Terrain, which I managed to do, and it was great fun. And it was um, really quite interesting. That sort of like leads into what I've been saying here. By breaking up just painted things that are easy and then painted things that take a bit longer, it's also just breaking up the, the colour palette, because sometimes you'll just get fed up of painting the same colours over and over and over again, especially if some of them are like white or something. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So to summarise, the way how I managed to get through this was by alternating my models and not going with the effort of just going like, right, get this completely done, this whole project, before moving on to another part of the backlog, because you'll simply, if you haven't got the motivation, you'll just stop and you'll end up buying new stuff. So alternate in between and like I said if you haven't really got much and it's like I literally just collect one army and I'm stuck with it like I said paint a hero halfway through or something like that just to try and break up some of your units that maybe are dragging on for ages like if you're just doing Skaven and you've got so many clan rats to paint maybe paint a warp lock engineer if you've got one just to break things up a little bit or a doom ball you know don't always save the good things to the end as for Skaven that's an example that I have actually got myself where when I used to collect them Every time I tried it twice, I always built and painted the clan rats first, always got to about 80 and then gave up on the whole army. So it's not always good to save all the good treats to last. You've got to sort of like ration them out a little bit. So with that, guys, that's going to be the video. So this has actually been quite a different one. It hasn't actually been part of the series, which I usually do my videos for, but I think it's been really enjoyable. And if you did put a comment on the community post to put up asking for video suggestions and obviously this isn't your video this isn't your suggestion i am looking at all those for motivation so i will maybe do more of those in the future as well so look out for that but above anything else guys what i want to say is i want to hear your tips towards motivation if you've got any or if you're struggling or anything put it down in the comments and i'll try and help you out best i can as that's what i'm here to do try and help you out with your age of sigma or to be honest any tabletop gaming in general this all applies to it doesn't it it doesn't matter even if let's say you're just doing like a I don't know, D&D, &D and you're painting up good guys, painting up bad guys, you know, like your warband, and well, I say your warband, basically, you know, your character, and if you're painting up your mate's characters and stuff as well, but you've got some bad guys as well, and you go, oh, I'm just fed up going through, like, you know, painting up the warband, painting up some of the cool monsters or whatever you got, or orcs, or however it works, just to break things up. So like I said, put any of that down in the comments below, it'd be great to hear, and what I also want to say is if you did enjoy this video, Hey, a great thing you could do is just by smashing that like button, smashing that subscribe button if you haven't already, as honestly, absolutely free, shows to me that you guys really like this type of content and I'll make it again. And above everything else, it's just a great way for you to show your support to myself for making these kind of videos. And if you haven't, make sure you press that bell notification as well. Absolutely smash that button. Sounds like a little thing, really helps out with things like algorithm and stuff on YouTube. So if you do that, I'll be really appreciative. And put your thoughts in the comments, like I've already said, as it'll be great to hear them. And I do, of course, want to do a shout out to my patrons, as because of them, I am able to continue making YouTube videos and to keep up this channel because they really do give me the motivation to be able to justify putting this much time into YouTube. And that is going to be my epic Morgas, which are going to be Sandback and Jonathan H, Phil Kern, Bleed Red. Guys, you're all amazing. Thank you for your continued huge support there. It really means a lot. Then my vampires, which are Mir, Martin S, Rousery21, David A, and Ronnie H. Again, guys, fantastic work. Thank you so much. Then my Necromancers, which is Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Wombat, and Christopher F, and Christopher C. All you guys really help as well. And collectively, you guys, like I said, are the reason why I can continue to do this channel. So what I'd like to say with that, if you would like to support the channel, please go to the link at the top of my description down below, and it'll take you to my Patreon. And even if you just consider giving $1 a month, guys, I'd be hugely appreciative of that. But if you can't and you did enjoy the video, like I said, make sure to smash that like button, that subscribe button, that bell notification massively helps out the channel and doesn't cost you a thing. Obviously, if you didn't like the video, please let me know in the comments down below why and then we can have that chat and I can try and improve my content for future videos. 
So with that guys, I'm going to again, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope that you've learned something and hopefully it's helped you out. And if it has, let me know that as well as it's great to hear. And until next time, as always, remember to stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and for God's sake, stay hygienic. So we will start gaming again soon. And obviously all the work you've been putting into painting these models and building these models isn't going to go to waste. But with that aside, remember more importantly that Nagash is all and all is one in the gash.